and welcome to Urban Green, a show that spotlights South Sound environmental efforts and showcases different ways to get involved in sustainable living practices. I'm your host, Leah Michelson, and today we're coming to you from South Park in the South Tacoma neighborhood. This summertime edition starts with an urban learning segment that features a project that worked to improve the safety and reliability at the city's central wastewater treatment plant. Safety and reliability are important features of the city's central wastewater treatment plant. To enhance these features, a major upgrade to the plant's electrical system took place, bringing the system up to date. This was essential for this facility as it treats over 7 billion gallons of wastewater annually. Most of the system was past its service life and over 30 years old and on the verge of failure. We'd have a couple small outages in the past years prior to the project that had us worried about you know, a future large outage that could impact the entire site. Uh, an outage of this system at certain locations could black out power to the entire site, which is a safety risk for staff, uh, danger to the facility and the environment. Due to a power failure, the equipment on site could have been damaged as well, and that could have led to a wastewater overflow causing unsafe conditions in local waterways and ultimately Commencement Bay. An upgrade like this has many benefits. I think three of the primary goals of the project was improving the safety, the reliability, and the redundancy of the system. We used to have uh, six feeder breakers, so essentially six circuit breakers that fed the whole plant. Uh, it was outdoor gear as well. Uh, the new system is indoor gear contained in the building behind us. This project has made it so any outage in a specific location will only affect that area. Redundancies were also added in the form of two separate electrical feeds from Tacoma Power that run throughout the entire site. We have what we call the A side and B side infrastructure. So uh, even if we have an outage on one side, the whole other side of the plant can be powered and power the whole facility. So. Although it would be disruptive in a moment, the plant would keep operating just fine. This was a complicated project and a big investment that was needed to maintain the facility and treat wastewater without interruptions. We literally had pieces of our old system failing as we were putting the new system in. We had switch gear over on this side over here. We had six breakers. One of them failed in place where we couldn't take it out of the cubicle. Fortunately, we just had finished that side going, down, going on either side of this. We finished that particular side. The other side, we had a vacuum bottle fail on one of them, which could have caused a bad short. The new system includes over 3,000 feet of underground, concrete reinforced duct banks, and over 20 miles of electrical cables. Something you don't see, you see the building that's behind me here, but something you don't see is all the underground wires that went from this building out, literally miles of 15 kV wire, uh, insulated 15 kV wire that goes through vaults underground, distributed throughout the facility. All that nobody sees, but the distribution is done and we now can control power for this facility with much fewer problems and much less risk. This electrical upgrade project addressed safety, reliability, and redundancy while protecting the plant, ratepayers, and the natural water bodies surrounding Tacoma. For more information on wastewater management, visit the city's site. Up next, we revisit an urban tabletop segment that took us to a local ice cream maker with a commitment to using natural ingredients. Hi, my name is Teresa Fouquet, and together with my sister Stacy, I am co-owner of Bliss Small Batch Creamery. Today, we would like to show you how to make a blueberry pie ice cream. This is something that you can make at home, the little Cuisinart or whatever brand you might have at home. The ingredients that go into making ice cream are actually very simple. It's ice cream base, which is sugar, cream, and milk. We are going to be using a blueberry compote. Um, this could be a blueberry jelly. This could be something that you mix together on the stove with some sugar. So we're going to add the blueberry compote to the ice cream mix. And then just stir that together. And again, this is cream, sugar, and milk to start with. And then we're adding our flavor to that. And vanilla always adds, um, just it actually draws out other flavors and enhances other flavors. So we always want to use just a little bit of vanilla and just add one teaspoon of vanilla to the mixture. And then I'll mix that up. And really that's all there is to our ice cream base. And we're going to add it to the machine. 
And this machine has a barrel to it, which is frozen. You keep it in your freezer, and it's gel filled. And while this goes round and round, it's going to be scraping the sides and freezing up our mixture as we go. Beautiful purple color. Put the lid on and then turn on the machine. So now we're going to wait for about 20 minutes. You'll know when it's getting frozen just by how thick it is. So now it looks like the, our ice cream mixture is, is starting to thicken up a little bit. So we can go ahead and add some um, fresh blueberries. This will give a little bit of, um, just a, a little bit of more dimension to our ice cream. So we'll just sprinkle it in there and the machine will just draw them into the mixture. We've pre-made the pie crust. I actually just used a pie crust from the grocery store. We're not going to use all of this because we're just making a very small batch, but I did just want to crumble some of this pie crust into our mixture, and again, the machine's just going to um, pull it all in, but just again, just to give a little bit of a dimension and to give it that blueberry pie flavor. So our ice cream's just about finished. You can tell when it's... Um, it looks pretty thick. You can tell it comes out like soft serve when you first take it out of the machine. The ideal thing to do from here would be to transfer it to another container and put it in your freezer so that it can hard freeze. Ice cream does bloom, so that while the flavor will be actually really good just coming out of here, it's going to be even better after it's had some time just to sit and freeze up hard in the machine. So go ahead and turn this off. color is just beautiful. There we go. And there's what our ice cream looks like. And like I said, it's just like soft serve and you just put it in your freezer so it will harden up and then you can scoop it. My name is Teresa Fouquet from Bliss Small Batch Creamery. Thanks for watching. You can track the Bliss Mobile Ice Cream vehicles at local farmers markets throughout the summer. Visit their website to find out more. After the break, we'll dive into a neighborhood greening project. But first, the Urban Quick Tip will share a natural mold remover for outdoor furniture. Welcome back. Now we will learn about the Greening Research in Tacoma Project, or GRIT. 
This is an effort to understand more about how human health and increased greening come together in South Tacoma. Greening Research in Tacoma, or GRIT, is a project with a focus on understanding how trees affect the local environment and the people living there. This project is a partnership between the Tacoma Tree Foundation, the Nature Conservancy, the University of Washington researchers, and the City of Tacoma. So trees provide a lot of ecosystem services or benefits to people, um, including uh, stormwater management, improving air quality, and the one that we're focused on so far in our grit research is um, air temperature and how trees can mitigate hot temperatures that we see a lot of in the city. Cities tend to be hotter during the summer months, but trees can provide some cooling that is beneficial to residents. How do trees affect air temperature as you're walking down the street and how do people experience that. So the other component of the research that I didn't mention earlier was the researchers at UW are actually focused not so much on temperature, but they're focused on human well-being. So they're doing interviews with people who live in Tacoma to understand how do people experience trees and nature and greening in their neighborhood. This project has installed around 55 temperature loggers on utility poles to collect data throughout the Tacoma Mall neighborhood. So we've started analyzing the data and we are finding that um, tree cover does have a significant effect on air temperature in the neighborhood. Having a tree that's providing shade and cooling the air is incredibly beneficial um, and just makes us all more comfortable. GRIT is connected to a neighborhood greening project, which is an effort to understand the area and how the project can grow and develop in a smart and responsible way. When the city adds population, especially Tacoma Mall neighborhood, they're looking at how we can improve the quality of life. That means adding shade, that means reducing the amount of pavement in the neighborhood, and looking for opportunities for people to access green space. The Greening Project is working on ways to add trees to this neighborhood that has a lot of pavement and minimal areas for planting. In the past three years, there have been about 372 trees planted in the Tacoma Mall neighborhood as a result of the partnership with Tacoma Tree Foundation and City Urban Forestry. And um, it's been a, a process of connecting with residents and businesses and other properties throughout the neighborhood that we're willing to uh, bring more shade into the neighborhood. More opportunities to plant will be available in the fall through the Tacoma Tree Foundation. All these efforts work to increase tree canopy and bring cooling to the area. The GRID project is a lot about quality of life and it's about understanding what it means to live in a neighborhood that has a lot of resources. And green space and shade are some of those resources that we have. Having shade and cooling is essential going forward in the climate that we have. For more information on this program, including how to get involved in tree planting in your neighborhood, visit the Tacoma Tree Foundation site. Up next is the Urban How To, this do-it-yourself segment features tips on using non-toxic weed solutions. Welcome to the Enviro House How To. I am Jenny and today we're going to be talking about remedies for the insects in your garden and your yard. This is neem, and neem is going to take care of your aphids, spider mite, white flies. It handles the rust really well. Now, neem is like the first go-to for any of those issues. It really handles those smaller, soft-bodied insects. Your broccoli is going to eventually get hit with aphids. It's just inevitable. Aphids love it. It's like sweet nectar. So. Neem should be your first go-to. You're going to apply it either very early in the morning or you're going to apply it at dusk. Horticultural oil is used in many applications. What the horticultural oil does is that it suffocates whatever is intruding into your, your garden or your fruit tree. And so you would spray this on and again you're going to spray it early morning or you're going to spray it at dusk. But know that it's not going to kill anything, but that it's going to trap it and it will suffocate whatever is underneath it. So then we're gonna get up a little bit. So copper soap fungicide is fantastic for rust. And it's when the leaves start turning this weird orangey brownish color. Sometimes a leaf curl 
really helps with leaf curl. But they do come in the ready to use spray bottles. Now, if you have like a huge area to cover, um, you're gonna be refilling a lot. So my recommendation is, is to get a, a ready to use spray bottle and get the concentrate because then you can just keep filling up that spray bottle. The spray bottle has the label of the product. Then you know that you don't have to label it. It's already ready for you and you're just adding that tablespoon to your spray bottle and then adding the water to keep using and reusing. Um, it does hit those those molds and funguses and really get them some, get some out of your garden, out of your trees effectively, efficiently, and it is bee safe. So again, like all the rest of these, you're gonna spray it in the morning, very early morning, or you're gonna spray it at dusk. Spinosad. Spinosad is that tool that you're gonna use when your neem or horticultural oil is just not doing it. Spinosad is gonna get those aphids. Um, it, it can affect ants. Um, this will be your next um, move to get the, you know, the aphids, leaf miners, and then again, those are the, the soft bodies, those white flies and things. If you're having um, the, the, the pest uh, level is, is quite high. Uh, but again, this will, this will take care of it. Now let's get into those caterpillars and these you know, Japanese beetles that are super invasive, uh, hard body shell guys. Um, so Captain Jack's, it will take care of your cabbage worm. A cabbage worm is so awful, okay? What those cabbage worms are from is the cabbage moth, but the cabbage moth is actually a butterfly, which is kind of strange. The caterpillars, they are going to nestle in, say this is your leaf and this is your stem, they're gonna nestle in right in that stem and they're gonna wait until it gets dark or if it's shaded and you won't even notice because it'll look like part of the stem. They're ingenious little guys. And then they'll start coming out and they'll go underneath your leaf and follow the veins of the leaves. Captain Jack's is absolutely the best way to go. Now, um, you are gonna need to apply it every other week if you have a lot of brassicas. You've got um, cabbage, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. You're gonna have to keep applying it throughout the season if you wanna keep those, um, if you have, if you see a lot of cabbage moth around your yard, you're going to have the, um, the cabbage, little, little caterpillar guy, little worm, and he's gonna come and he's gonna eat your stuff. So it takes care of all of that larvae. So gypsy moths, um, you've got coddling moth, all, all of those little guys that are getting laid by our winged adults, this does it, okay? The hard body, the bigger, the more robust uh, insects and, um, and plant predators. Um, so it's, it's a really nice one. Um, it does do those Japanese beetles a number. So if you see Japanese beetles, they're super invasive, Captain Jack's can do it. But again, you're gonna have to reapply several times. So again, this is a concentrate. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get a spray bottle or you can get a larger concentrate and get one of those Hudson sprayers and you can just get a bigger thing and spray everything. But um, the getting a concentrate and getting the ready to use sprayer, you can keep adding to it. I know I've already gone through about half of mine. Oh, and then we have our Triple Action Plus. So if none of these things are working, Triple Action Plus has is formulated so you can use it. It, it. It's basically, this is combining all of these. The Triple Action Plus combines all of these tools together. So if you have all of the problems <laughs> in your yard, you can use the Triple Action Plus. And again, this is a concentrate. And some folks who have, um, maybe they're new to their yard, uh, might have a broad range all at the same time because they haven't been able to pinpoint and take control of, of the various um, pests and, and mites and fungicides in their, and fun fungus in their yard. So um, if you're really struggling, then just with all of those things, get the Triple Action Plus, okay? Diatomaceous Earth is also called DE. DE is great. It will deter slugs, snails, ants, beetles, Anything that has a, a harder shell or has a soft exposure, what it does, it's, um, it's like going through glass for these little guys, uh, for the snails. They go on top of it, and what it does is it lacerates their body. So a lot of times this is used for ants, keeping ants out of specific places. Um, it can keep silverfish, uh, fleas, mites, 
if you have chickens, diatomaceous earth is also going to be your best friend. It keeps uh, fly, flies down. This product has a nice top, you know, and you can trim the top and then you can strategically squirt it everywhere you want. It's a powder. Um, you can get 25 pound bags and uh, you can get it in all different sizes. You can get food grade um, if you're using it around a lot of animals. Um, again, it is not going to be harmful to you or your pets. I use diatomaceous diatomaceous earth in um, my home actually I've got little tiny black ants and it uh, keeps them keeps them at bay in certain spots that uh, that really I see them coming in in the spring and then see them trying to find refuge in the fall so diatomaceous earth is a really easy one and you don't need a lot sluggo sluggo takes care of your slugs and your snails we have another product as well that is out there it's called uh, sluggo plus and that gets the isopods the pill bugs it gets a few other things um, but Sluggo is, is an Omni certified product, and that means it, it, it is used on uh, organic farming. They can use this. It is uh, USDA organic certified um, stuff. So uh, Sluggo is super effective. You sprinkle it around the edge of your area, edge of your garden, um, and it will, they will rid you of a slug and snail problem. We have uh, deer and rabbits, uh, deer here in our area. So this is a wonderful deer and rabbit repellent. Um, it does not hurt them in any fashion, um, but it's a liquid fence. And what you do is you put it around the perimeter of the space that you're trying to protect. You're probably early in the season gonna have to do it a couple of times, you know, do it one week, do it again another week, do it again a third week, and then you'll be able to take a small break and uh, you'll probably have to do another two or three applications um, throughout the summer to protect your area. But um, we found that customers really like this and it is effective. This comes in a concentrate, uh, so you could put it in a Hudson sprayer, or uh, there is also a very large container that has a ready to use uh, sprayer for perimeter if you have a larger area to do. If you have fruit trees, the calling moth um, is gonna go for all of your fruit and berries, um, mostly your apples and your pears. Um, these are our nice little traps inside here. And they look like little tents. So these tents are very sticky. And um, you just, you pop them up. It has a pull here. And then you just set it into your tree. It has a little hole and it does have some attachments you can attach it to your tree. This is an aphid and white fly trap. Aphids and white flies are, white flies you're gonna find them inside your home and house plants a lot of times. Um, you'll see little tiny guys flying around. Aphids and white flies, they absolutely love to sit in the Swiss chard. They will hang out in all of your brassicas. Again, the brassica family is gonna be your broccoli, your cauliflowers, your kales, your uh, Brussels sprouts, all of those. And white flies and aphids, they really team up. They really like to hang out together. So these are just little traps. There are holes here and they punch out just like that. I'm only gonna peel off just a little bit, but it is very sticky. So you peel this off, um, but this is a very, very, very sticky. Each kit comes with several. If you have a small space, maybe you only use one, but you can, you've got three more to use over the season. You've got lots of spaces, you've got several places to put it. And um, what I like to do, uh, this, this doesn't come with uh, the post or sticks. I have to use popsicle sticks or use um, takeout um, chopsticks and I stick them through the holes because it, it has three holes here and I stick it through the holes and it looks like a little yellow flag sitting in the garden okay so you can stick the the takeout uh, chopstick in there and do that or you can tape tape a popsicle stick or even those uh, skinny bamboo sticks it works really really well okay that's for white fly and aphid traps and that, you know, and that's if you're feeling a little unsure about any of using a spray or a liquid, um, liquid deterrent, deterrent. Well, that's about all I have for pests and how to keep them at bay in your garden. Thank you for watching the Envire House how-to video. Hope to see you again. These how-tos were created in partnership with the Enviro House free workshop series designed to support healthy, sustainable homes and gardens. For a listing of workshops, visit the city's site. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Urban Green. 
I'm Leah Michelson, leaving you with more ways to engage in sustainable living practices that are right for your lifestyle.